Hey everyone, Tom Stelauer here, and today's video is all about helping you burn more fat while you sleep. But I have to be very, very honest here. We can't magically burn fat while we're sleeping, but what we can do is improve our metabolic rate and our resting energy expenditure, which will ultimately allow us to utilize more calories while we sleep. I'm a science nerd, so I have to make things somewhat correct here and can't just make it gimmicky. But we're gonna cover some interesting things. We're gonna cover a specific kind of fat that you can add to your diet that's gonna help you out with burning a little bit of fat, well, I guess while you sleep. Then we're gonna talk about some spices that you can add. Then we're gonna talk about the occasional cold plunge and how it can make a big impact on your fat burning. But then we're gonna talk about a specific mineral, in fact, zinc, and why you may wanna be adding it to your diet. Then we're gonna move into some sleep tactics because, I hate to break it to you, sleep still plays plays a big role, and I'll give you some specific pieces that you can implement to sleep better to ultimately burn more fat. So without further ado, let's jump in. But first, hit that red subscribe button, and then hit that bell icon so you never miss our daily videos. Okay, jumping right in. The oil that you need to add to the diet every now and then is going to be MCT oil, but it's very important that you get it in what is called a C8 form. Okay, C8 MCT oil, uh, you'll see it on Amazon, you'll see it everywhere, okay? It's relatively inexpensive. The point is, you shouldn't be replacing other fats with MCTs. You should just add a couple tablespoons of MCT throughout the course of the day. You don't even necessarily need to do it before bed. Here's what's going on. There's a really interesting thing that was published in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. They took a look at eight people, okay? And they measured their resting energy expenditure, like how many calories they burn at rest. And then they also measured what are called catecholamines. Catecholamines, it's a fancy word, but it's basically just adrenaline and epinephrine and things that ultimately stimulate the fight or flight response, which by the way, burns fat. Okay, so what they did is they divided them into a few groups and they gave them different ratios of medium chain triglycerides, MCT oil, alongside other fats, longer chain fats, like olive oil, things like that. So some groups had a lot of MCT, some groups had a little bit of MCT. Well, they found at the end of this study that the subjects that consumed more MCT had more catecholamines, had more adrenaline, and ultimately led to a higher resting energy expenditure. In fact, the groups that had more MCT had as much as a 5% increase in their resting energy expenditure, a 5% increase in metabolism just by adding MCT oil. Why? Because MCT oil digests so fast that it actually triggers a fight or flight response. The body's like, whoa. So that means you may not wanna have it right before bed, but if you have it earlier in the evening, you can at least upregulate your metabolism, at least based on some of this research, and it could be one of many pieces that you can apply. All right, now let's jump into the next piece, which is quite frankly, adding some cayenne. Now, cayenne pepper works in a very similar fashion. Cayenne pepper will stimulate the beta adrenergic activity. So it is a beta adrenergic stimulant. So it means that it's going to increase adrenaline. You don't wanna have that right before bed, but you add a little bit of cayenne to maybe a beverage or maybe a meal a few hours before bed. And once again, it's all about that just upregulation of thermogenesis and upregulation of the metabolism. A study that was published in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition took a look at subjects that consumed nine milligrams of capsiate. Okay, and they did this for a few weeks and they found that they had a decrease in abdominal fat compared to control. Now, it was a pretty small amount, but the point was is they saw an improvement, okay? And it, again, it all had to do with the fact that they were stimulating more epinephrine. So one of the things that I like to do is make a little beverage. So I like adding cayenne pepper to bone broth. So that's a really simple way to do it, right? You can add some cayenne to bone broth and you sip on that around dinner time. It's a really delicious, simple treat, right? Really easy to do. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is something that you can implement into your life, I don't know, maybe once or twice a week, maybe even a couple times per month. And it's something that I've grown to like quite a bit and it's being talked about a lot. It's the occasional cold plunge, okay? Occasional cold shower, the occasional ice bath. See, what it does is once again, back to that common theme here, catecholamines. It causes a shock to the body so you have a spike of adrenaline. That spike of adrenaline does a couple of different things though. That spike of adrenaline causes a liberation of fatty acids, okay? Catecholamines like adrenaline cause fatty acids to liberate into the body. It's a simple process, okay? When we are going through fight or flight because something shocks us, our body will a lot of times spurt glucose, but a lot of times it will spurt lipids into the bloodstream for quick fuel, okay? over time and consistently doing this along with a healthy diet can have a big impact on certain things. Okay, in one particular case, PPAR alpha. PPAR alpha is something that increases when we have fats liberated into the bloodstream. And basically what it means is your body gets more fat adapted. So what does fat adaptation do for you? Well, 
it makes it so that your body is used to using fats. So then while you are sleeping and you're not eating, there's a higher likelihood that your body could start using those fats. But I would honestly say the biggest benefit to doing a cold plunge is the fact that it makes you a calmer person. I notice that if I'm stressed out and I consistently take cold showers or do cold plunges, it ends up bringing my overall stress levels down. And that's because I'm activating my sympathetic nervous system so much to the point that when I'm not in the cold shower, I'm a calmer person. And guess what? I sleep better that way and sleep leads to more fat loss, right? I will say though, some of the things that I talked about, like uh, the oils, like the MCTs, the spices, the bone broth, all those things are things that you can get at Thrive Market. So there is a link down below in the description after you finish this video. Uh, I've been able to assemble basically these little boxes, like fasting boxes, keto boxes that are grocery boxes through Thrive Market. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So that way you can get the groceries that Thomas DeLauer recommends based on my specific videos and things like that. So anyhow, whether you use my boxes or not, it's just a cheaper way to get your groceries and they get right to your doorstep. You don't have to go to the grocery store. So go ahead and check them out. There's a link down below in the description, but make sure it's after you watch the rest of this video because you're gonna learn some other tips. So big thank you to Thrive Market for making this possible and for extending the special pricing and everything out to my viewers. This next piece we have to talk about is zinc. Zinc is a mineral that is so vital for the thyroid. It is vital for a lot of cellular functions. It's vital for a lot of cells that have faster turnover. But one of the things that's overlooked is that our cells that receive the thyroid hormone need zinc in order to actually have that thyroid connect. What that means is that if we're deficient in zinc, our cells don't communicate with the brain to talk about how much thyroid is in the bloodstream. Therefore, the brain doesn't signal the thyroid to produce more or less. If you're familiar with the thyroid, you know that the thyroid is a big regulator of the metabolism. So we want to make sure we take care of it. And a lot of people will say, just boost your iodine levels, this and that. And that's good for your thyroid. That's important. But I like to take a different approach. I think that a lot of us aren't getting enough zinc because so much of our veggies and so much of our food source in general is demineralized from just over harvesting. So shellfish, red meat, nuts, all these things are high in zinc, which can have over the long term a better effect on your thyroid, which in essence is going to make you ultimately burn fat and burn more calories all the time, not just while you sleep. Again, a lot of these things are things you can get at Thrive too, just FYI, the nuts and seeds and stuff I'm talking about. Now we jump into a piece that's not going to be exciting for a lot of you, but it's probably the most important piece. You have to sleep better. And this is coming from a guy that has a crazy toddler in the house and has a newborn coming and probably doesn't get enough sleep himself. Point is, you gotta sleep. And if we look at the science, we see some interesting stuff. But I've got a really cool trick for you if you don't sleep well, that's going to help you at least stay leaner, even if you don't sleep well. So there's a study that's published in uh, the journal Sleep way back in 1997, ages ago, right? Okay. So this study took a look at individuals that were getting eight hours of sleep, four hours of sleep, or total sleep deprivation for one night. Okay, interesting results. The group that had four hours of sleep deprivation had a 37% increase in cortisol. The group that had total sleep deprivation had a 45% increase in cortisol. It's not even that big of a difference. The reason that this is kind of funny to me is there's been so many nights where I cannot sleep, so I just get up and I just stay up all night. It's a terrible thing to do. But the funny thing is this gives me a little bit of peace because I'm like, wow, there was only an 8% difference in the cortisol levels for, for not sleeping at all versus struggling for four hours. It's kind of funny. Anyhow, point is, you don't want your cortisol levels to be super high. However, cortisol levels are really only a problem with fat accumulation when they're in conjunction with insulin. Okay, so if your cortisol levels are high and then you go and you eat some carbs, you're gonna have a big problem. Okay, you're gonna have a big, big problem. So what I usually recommend is if you, for whatever reason, are not sleeping well, okay, on the off chance that you just go a night without sleeping much, fast the next day. Why? Because cortisol levels are going to be elevated, but cortisol levels can help you burn fat if they're not in the presence of insulin. It's kind of a way of making, I don't know, something good out of something bad, right? You don't sleep well, at least fast the next day so you reduce the potential accumulation of fat. At least that's my theory based on the different hormone science that I've seen, right? But we need to help you sleep better overall because that's a really important piece. And one of the tricks that I like to do is mess around with taking glycine, a very, very cheap, simple supplement. You can get it anywhere, get it on Amazon, okay? 
Glycine is powerful at helping you fall asleep because it triggers vasodilation via the activation of the NMDA receptor. Okay, what that means is that blood flow increases and it increases to our extremities. When blood flow increases to our extremities, it causes a cooling effect on our body. That cooling effect allows us to calm down and fall asleep. It's a natural diurnal process that it gets cooler in the evening time and our bodies cool down and it triggers the release of melatonin, which helps us gently fall asleep. Glycine can kind of help push that along. Take it one step further and combine glycine with a couple hundred milligrams of magnesium and you've got a cocktail that can help you sleep. And I know this was all about how to burn fat while you sleep, but guess what? You're not burning fat if you're not sleeping. So burning fat while you sleep is completely irrelevant if you're not sleeping. So let's sleep. Anyhow, this is the gist of it. Add the MCT oil, okay? Two, three, four tablespoons throughout the course of the day, but don't replace your good healthy fats with it. Just add it, okay? Add the cayenne, okay? Mix it with bone broth, something like that. Then we move into the occasional cold plunge once or twice a week. Okay? Then we move into adding zinc, like some nuts, some sprouted seeds, things like that. And then we talk about sleep, all right? So as always, make sure you're hitting that red subscribe button. Make sure you're seeing the daily videos. I'll see you soon.